let's talk about Frederick Mal, the brand, not the person, also known as Edition de Parfum Frederick Mal. So the brand started in the year 2000 and their tagline is total freedom of composition, meaning that they're giving total freedom to the perfumer. The perfumer can decide what they want to put in the bottle and the bottles all have the name of the perfumer on them. Hopefully putting the perfumer in the spotlight and letting the public know who the perfumer is, but also, you know, having some accountability because if the perfumer's name is on the perfume, hopefully they are going to create something that they are really proud of. And that is what initially attracted me to the brand when I first um, smelled it at the counter. I thought that that was really a cool idea and it really was changing the way that people looked at perfume and bought perfume at the time definitely changed the way that perfume was made because leading up to that time and even now the way that perfumes are made for brands is that the brand will come out with a brief or an idea a concept that they want in a scent and then brand our companies and perfumers will pitch their ideas the brand picks their favorite idea the perfumer maybe submits a um a draft or a finished perfume and then the executive or the team or the brand looks at that perfume and suggests changes or re recommends changes requires changes and then the perfumer has to make those changes even if you know, they felt like their perfume was fine to begin with or they really liked what they had created. They really don't have a lot of control over what comes to market. Um, and so this was kind of changing all of that because now the perfumer did have some control. But, you know, Frederick Mal is not the perfumer for any of the perfumes under his brand and he is the editor of the perfumes. And so a lot of the perfumes, some of the perfumes have input from him and they always have had input from him. So a little bit of, um, it's not necessarily like total freedom of composition, but definitely the perfumer gets the final word over what goes into the bottle and their name is going to be assigned to that perfume. So that's something interesting. You know, Frederick Mal wasn't an outsider to the perfume world. He definitely was an insider, is an insider. His grandfather was the person that started Parfum Christian Dior and his mother was the creative director for it. I also read somewhere that um, his family bought the apartment that the Guerlains lived in in Paris and so his bedroom was the same bedroom that Jacques Guerlain had growing up which is really interesting kind of funny and so this is someone that is inside that perfume world um, and even though he's not a trained perfumer he's also not an outsider so it's not like an outsider's coming in and you know being really subversive it is that someone that's already inside was seeing a hole in the market and created some Something that they thought should be there so that was something that was niche and definitely different at the time and the perfumers were allowed to create regardless of cost and final price so each perfume is priced differently because it reflects the amount of or or the cost of the raw materials that are going into the bottle supposedly um, seems true to me but it's not that you're you know paying two hundred dollars for any and every perfume that the brand brings out uh of course you know um some of their perfumes that are really well known say that they have the highest of certain raw materials for example carnal flower is said to have the highest amount of tuberose extract or absolute that's in a perfume ever and they still say that so i'm guessing that they're standing by that. Um, in 2015, the brand was sold to Estee Lauder. And I know that in the perfume world, a lot of times people don't like it when their favorite perfume brand gets sold because they think that it means that there's going to be changes to the formula. And, you know, the formulas that are out today do, the perfumes that are out today do smell different than, you know, even five years ago and that's not even 2015 so whether they're changing because of Estee Lauder or they're just changing because of regulations or the availability of materials we don't really know initially brand the brand launched 
nine perfumes they came out with nine perfumes and now they have 47 and i know that there's one more coming out later this year which i'm really excited to smell because jean-claude elena is the perfumer behind that um the good thing about being sold to a big conglomerate is that distribution usually improves so more people are able to smell the perfume get the perfume order samples there's usually shipping all over the world there's websites that are dedicated to specific countries so you know acquisition does have that benefit and if we think that people should be able to smell and obtain good perfume then you know technically then that's a good thing increased distribution is a good thing but with increased distribution there's also excess stock and when that excess stock needs to be liquidated all these perfumes end up at the discounter and when that happens there's a huge discrepancy between the price that you're paying at the counter and the price that you could be paying if you bought it off a discounter and you know just because something's at a discounter doesn't mean that it's you know um, necessarily bad a lot of times it's the same perfume same packaging same everything but it's excess stock from a country whose regulations have changed right and then the perfume can't be sold in that country and that country or the stores in that country have to get rid of the perfume and so they'll send it to a discounter that's selling in a country that can sell everything or anything and can sell that perfume um, sometimes it's just change in packaging and so they've got to get rid of the old packaging and everything is sold lock stock and barrel to the discounter um, I will say having spoken to people that are in the industry the margins at the discounter are way less than the margins at the counter that at, that are at the department store so I know that as a fact the markup just isn't there at discounters and so um, that also accounts for the discrepancy in pricing. The other thing with all these brands is that the prices go higher and higher every year and they're increasing greater than the amount of inflation that there is. And brands have said that, you know, the cost of raw material is increasing or the raw material is more difficult to obtain. But we also know that they're not keeping the formula the same as it was previously. And if a company like Estee Lauder is purchasing ingredients in bulk, then why is that cost saving not passed on to the consumer? You would think that prices would actually go down after acquisition, but that has not happened either. Um, I know that the prices of some of these perfumes make it so that they're really not accessible to a lot of people. A lot of people will look at the sticker price and won't even try the perfume because they don't want to fall in love with it. And it, that seems kind of um, unfortunate, I think. And it also creates a market for dupes and copies. And that is also not great because those dupes and copies kind of can get to the top notes but really don't replicate the full texture and experience of the fragrance in my opinion from all the dupes and copies that i've smelled i haven't really been wowed by any of them whereas with the originals at least the ones that i have i i really think that they are something special and worth keeping and worth holding on to um i will tell you what you get so when this so this is the one perfume that's in my collection and that's carnal flower and um so this is the outer sleeve and then inside there's a box and you pull it out and the bottle's inside and there's foam around here so the bottle sits nicely inside and doesn't move around so if you are traveling or moving you're able to transport your perfume securely and the sleeve just kind of keeps everything wrapped and nicely together so that's nice i mean it's not the most luxurious packaging that i've seen but it's nice um nothing really to complain about and then um oh yeah so the price discrepancy so 100 ml bottle right now of carnal flower is 580 dollars for 100 mls and then at the discounter today it was 419 dollars so that's an almost 200 dollar difference that is considerable um if you're buying a 50 ml bottle 
the price at the counter is 390 this is before tax so it would be over 400 dollars. and then at the discounter it is 299 dollars. so that's a 100 dollar um price difference between discounter versus going to the counter i feel like people say that if you buy from the counter or you buy from the brand you're getting a whole bunch of extras like you can get samples you have the relationship with the sales associate they might throw in a candle a mini a travel size um a travel atomizer all these other potential goodies but I don't know if you have the choice and you can spend $400 at the counter and you're going to get a prize, but you don't know what that prize is going to be. It could be a candle. It could be samples. It could be a handshake, right? That might be the prize. Um, or you could spend $300 online and you're getting exactly the same bottle, same juice, which is, I mean, the juice is really what should matter, right? So you're getting the same thing. Um, and with that extra $100, you can choose what you're going to do with it. So you can go to dinner, you can buy coffee for everybody in the office, you can send flowers to your mom, send flowers to yourself, like you can do whatever you want with the $100. I would choose the second option, right? I would rather choose what I'm going to do with my money instead of going to the counter and potentially getting something that I actually didn't want to begin with. Like if I wasn't going to buy the candle, it shouldn't matter to me that they're throwing it in for free. So for me, no shade to anyone that is buying at the counter, but for me, I like to choose what I'm going to do with the money. And if I can get the same thing somewhere else, exactly the same, still Frederick Mel, um, I'm obviously going to do that. And it's going to be a hard sell to convince me otherwise. Just saying, that's just my personal opinion over how I spend my money. I think that if they are able to sell to a discounter for really cheap, then they should maybe just drop their prices at the counter and maybe they wouldn't have so much excess stock. But maybe that's too simple. Too simple a solution to actually be possible. Cardinal Flower is really a um, white floral fragrance that sold me on tuberose because normally I don't really love white florals but there's the greenness in this the freshness of it I just really love and I still feel like every year there's some brand that tries to make their version of carnal flower but this one came first and this is Dominique Gropion I still think it's wonderful I really really enjoy wearing this and then the other frederick mal perfume in my collection is portrait of a lady also dominique ropion and again i feel like other brands are trying to come out with a spicy um rose patchouli not that like rose patchouli hadn't been done before but a spicy rose patchouli i think is just what makes this so unique and it's got like anise and cinnamon and black pepper and raspberry it's just really dry both of these are really strong so this to me is like a beast mode perfume because I could only wear one or two sprays maximum two I definitely wouldn't wear this to an intimate setting or to work I would only wear it to like a party or a large gathering I've gotten so many compliments on this I think because people can smell it. Usually people can't necessarily smell my perfume, but I always get compliments when I, when I wear this and it just smells so opulent and really, really full of that earthy dry rose. So I really, really love this too. Um, you know, the perfume world has changed a lot since 2000. So it was revolutionary to put the perfumer's name on the bottle of perfume but now a lot of companies are doing that and a lot of perfumers have their own brands and they're able to launch their own formulas if they want to so maybe it doesn't feel like it's revolutionary anymore but it definitely was when it launched and some of those original perfumes are still really great i also really like musk ravageur so i wouldn't mind adding that to my collection also i a long time ago i had like a sample set of a bunch of them of the perfumes i think i had the original nine that launched and i really liked going through all of them but none of them really moved me enough for me to finish the sample or to buy the perfume the other one that i really liked was lipstick rose and 
when I was at the counter, the sales associate told me that the perfumer had created it to mimic the scent of the lipstick that his mother wore, which I thought was really ironic because it smells exactly like L'Oreal lipstick, which is a affordable drugstore lipstick and it has always smelled the same and um i mean i've worn a lot of l'oreal lipstick in my life so i recognize the scent immediately and the irony is like here's this 400 600 dollar perfume that smells just like a affordable drugstore product and probably you know L'Oreal for sure has somewhere the oil, the scent perfume oil that they put in that lipstick and he just created his own version and yeah, it's probably got all these, um, you know, uh, great ingredients and I know Frederick Mel perfumes have a high amount of naturals that you can actually smell in the perfumes, but it just also smells so um, mass appealing, right? Like L'Oreal would scent their lipsticks like that because it would be a mass appealing scent. So I thought that was kind of ironic. Um, yeah, so these two, great perfumes. Tell me what you think if you own any Frederick Mal perfumes or what you think of the brand or maybe you have some on your wish list. Definitely, I want to smell the new one that's coming out. It's called Heaven Can Wait and it's supposed to be warm spices and carrot seed and ambrette. So that seems really interesting. And yeah, if you've smelled it already, I don't know. I feel I know that it's already done and bottles are out there, just not at the counter here yet. So you've smelled it already. Tell me what you think. Okay, that's it for me. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.